Welcome to CS Global Partners webinar on 2nd of April. CS Global Partners is a legal and marketing consultancy firm based in London. We specialize in citizenship by investment options in Caribbean countries. Today we are going to discuss citizenship by investment in Dominica with head of the citizenship by investment unit. Dominica has been operating its citizenship by investment program since 1993 and is one of the world's leading jurisdictions for investor immigration. It can count on the support of economic citizens from across the world with its new embassy in Abu Dhabi staking testament to the island's growing international profile. Recently, the Citizenship by Investment Program has received praise from the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank for its role in helping the island rebuild itself in the aftermath of hurricanes Irma and Maria, allowing Dominica to build back better and to record an outstanding 9% growth in 2019. With us to discuss Dominica's achievements is His Excellency Ambassador Emmanuel Nansen, who heads the Dominica Citizenship by Investment Unit. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Thank you very much for joining us today. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to viewers. It's my pleasure uh, welcoming you uh, to Dominica, beautiful Dominica, where we enjoy uh, the lost beauty of the green Dominica and uh, nice blue skies. So really and truly, I thank you very much for taking time off to be with us. We know that we're going through difficult uh, and challenging times as a global community. So you being here means a lot to us. We are very pleased and satisfied uh, with your contribution, your participation. You, you are the, the heartbeat uh, of our program. You, the participants, uh, you here with us today, you are the, the blood that flows through our veins. You are the ones who make us uh, who we are, a successful program. We thank you very much for your continued work, commitment, devotion. We wish you well. We urge you to stay safe, stay inside. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, for such a kind wishes. Well, before we start this questions and answer session today, I think it will be very helpful for our audience to watch a short video about citizenship by investment in Dominica. The CBI program of Dominica has been operating since 1993. This highly reliable program invites investors of good character to make an economic contribution to the country. In exchange, if they meet strict legal and other requirements, the applicant and their family members can obtain full citizenship of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Your Excellency, you're responsible for a program that has been in existence for decades. Do you think this longevity is an asset to Dominica? I believe uh, we've been here for 27 years this year uh, is actually one of the major reasons for the success we are having. Investors, uh, high profile clients, when they invest, they do not just do it uh, by chance. They look at the record. They look at how long we have been uh, existing. They look at the friends who have received Dominican passports. They look at the children of the friends and their grandchildren. So there is a track record in Dominica of a program that is well established, accepted by the world. A program uh, where you have generational transformation or transfers uh, of citizenship to children, to grandchildren, great-grandchildren. 
And uh, we have seen these things happening over, over the past uh, 27 years in our program. So our investors are very uh, satisfied with that. They see that the Dominica program is well accepted uh, globally. And Dominica, uh, we have been adding more and more visitor-free uh, countries. We have moved from 121 to uh, they're about 140. Just last year, we added uh, places like, like, uh, like, like China. We added Russia. We had places like Brazil. So they're seeing that we're really and truly getting stronger and stronger. And uh, for the investor who has to, to, to use his money, he wants to ensure that he's doing it in a program that is not just one that, uh, it's not a journey come lately. It's one that is there, that has been established, and Dominica provides that the ideal opportunity. The program is one of the longest running citizenship by investment programs in the world. And as you mentioned, it's very well established by now. It's also one of the fastest and most affordable available in the Caribbean country. Dominica's program has been in operation for a long time, but it has seen some changes. One of these was the introduction of two separate investment options. Can you please explain what these are? Yes, well, in 2014, uh, the government made a change to our laws to allow citizens to invest through a real estate. Before that, you could only invest through a direct government fund. $100,000 for an individual, being one of the cheapest uh, available uh, in the world. Uh, for husband and wife would be one seventy-five, dollars And for a family of up to four children, it would be $200,000. From 2014, the government allowed uh, investors to invest in private sector real estate projects. And uh, by doing so, we would become citizens of Dominica. That we have seen attracted a number of investors uh, who are interested in, in, in having funds, in having uh, solid investments, and at the same time, uh, getting the benefit of being citizens of Dominica. So for us, that has been uh, very good. Dominica citizenship applicants can meet the program's financial requirements by either buying approved real estate in the country or by donating to the government fund. Neither option is necessarily better than the other, but both can offer certain advantages over the other. Under the program, real estate is pre-selected by the government, what is involved in the selection process itself. And why does Dominica restrict the number of real estate developments it approves? Well, uh, to be approved as a, as a real estate project, the project must be in line with government development plans, development goals. Uh, for instance, the, uh, we have to ensure that there is sustainability uh, in the project. We have to ensure that we, we're building uh, a green uh, economy. We're building the world's first climate resilient economy. So uh, we ensure that the projects that are approved are approved along those lines. There must be benefit for the country, for the, for the population, for the people of Dominica. Job creation uh, is, is a, a solid thing that, that we need to con into consideration. Markets for our farmers, for the produce, uh, for the, when they produce to the hotels, they, that's another consideration. Uh, but again, being uh, in line with our sustainable way of development, that for us is important uh, and that for us uh, is key. We uh, have, in the meantime, approved a number of five-star projects in keeping with government uh, development plans. Dominica being part of the Caribbean, uh, being an area where tourism is important and tourism uh, uh, is really what we are about. We have approved a number of, of projects to increase the number of room space uh, in, in our hotels to encourage more and more tourists to Dominica. You did mention of the fact that we only approve a few projects at a time. Yes, that is true. The main aim behind that is to ensure that the projects we approve have a fair chance of succeeding. So for instance, uh, in some countries you have 20, 100, and even more than 100 investments. So investors choosing to invest have a wide choice. It means therefore that the amount of money going through the project is divided uh, among, among many investments. In Dominica, we approve only a few projects. So the, the money going through goes through at a faster rate. There is a, a better transfusion of, of funds to get the projects completed at a specific time in a short time. So for us, that really and truly uh, is very important. Growing alongside the sustainable tourism industry, foreign ownership of real estate in Dominica has increased rapidly over the past few years. Record numbers of clients are attracted to the island's natural beauty and peaceful way of life, and businessmen from around the globe are strategically investing in Dominica luxury resorts like Cabritz, particularly individuals from China, Russia, and the Middle East. Your Excellency, 
it would be interesting to find out in what other ways has the program evolved. We strive to remain at the forefront of uh, the global migration industry. We do so by, by enforcing a robust due diligence process. We have engaged some of the best companies in the world to do due diligence for us. People like SRM, people like Thomson Reuters, people uh, like bishops. We use the best due diligence firms uh, to ensure that we have uh, excellent vetting of every investor that we have in our program. That's what future investors know that the people who are, who are allowed in Dominica Project and Dominica Program have been properly vetted. We use due diligence for, with our regional partners as well, such as our GRCC. We use our regional partners uh, and international intelligence community to ensure that the people who invest in our project and in our program are not wanted in any way, are not being monitored uh, uh, in, in any way by uh, international partners. So we try to ensure that the backbone, the cornerstone of our program is our due diligence. Recently, we introduced as well a further layer of due diligence for our agents. Every agent must know their client. It is important in the financial uh, world today that every investor must know his client. He must uh, do, every agent must do due diligence on their own clients. They must also submit, as of, of last month, uh, a copy of a world check done by a reputable world check uh, organization and, and institution. We believe that only by inviting the best the cleanest, the most uh, reputable people that our, pro our project and program can continue to be the best that, that we can. I see that Dominica is committed to an excellent standard of due diligence to protect the integrity of its citizenship investment program. And only individuals with no criminal records and whose funds have been legally obtained will be permitted to acquire citizenship in the country in the first place. Does your commitment to diligence ever mean people are entirely excluded from the program? Yes, uh, again, as part of our commitment to the global community, if someone has a criminal record, we'll not accept them in our program, period. Uh, because we work with international partners, if you have a visa denial from one of our people who we have visa free access to, we will deny you, um, of course. With the challenges uh, uh, in Iran, North Korea, Sudan, we will not accept applicants from, from those countries except they, have, they live and work out of those areas for at least 10 years with no ties uh, to these, these areas. So these are some of the things that, that we must do. But we must ensure as well that every applicant must be a minimum of 18, 18 years of age and older. So uh, we want to ensure that no one falls through the crack because we have a commitment to our global and international communities to ensure that everyone who's accepted has been properly vetted. Thank you. Your Excellency, I see that the program is both well established and greatly respected and has been in operation for more than 20 years. Highly rated by the international community and managed by industry, skillful leading professionals. Dominica is a vocal advocate of coordinated Caribbean wide due diligence and transparency effort. What other transparency measures do you have in place? For us, transparency in, in our program is, is key. It is a Again, another con uh, cornerstone of our program. We publish the names of every applicant that's successful. That's published in our gazette, and uh, normally that's done quarterly. We ensure that uh, we give a detailed budget of all funds received by the program. That's done to parliament, that's done uh, on, a, on a regular basis. So everybody know the monies that came in and how these monies were spent. We ensure, we recently we invited uh, Pricewaterhouse Cooper's Libraries out of London to do an audit of, of our program and to publish that internationally. So people can see what's, what's been done with the funds of Dominica. Every Dominican is uh, proud of the program because we see how well the funds from the program uh, assist us in infrastructure, in education, uh, in, in housing, uh, and so many other things. We have a national employment program, for instance, where young people are given jobs temporarily as the gain experience, and that's been paid for by funds from the program. So Dominicans on a whole, they see what the program is doing. They see the benefits of the program. They see the infrastructure. They see the schools that have been built, the houses that have been built for people. They see the names published of the people who, who are invested. And uh, the audits are available. The funds are reported to Parliament. 
So we have a very, very transparent method of doing our business. And that uh, for us has brought in the community, the Dominican community at, at large. So they, have, they feel comfortable being and supporting the program in every way possible. Although Dominica is an affordable citizenship by investment country, they do not compromise on compliance measures, as I noticed, and their due diligence process as well. Putting due diligence to one side, what other requirements must an applicant fulfill under the program? Anyone invited out of high moral value. Okay. They must be 18 years of age uh, and older. If it's in the case of a child, there must be the signature of both parents. If you, there's no requirement for someone to visit, there is no requirement uh, for them to be able to speak English. If there are questions that are required, then we will invite the person for an interview. That could be done in person or could be done uh, on the internet via Skype or, or, some, or some other measures. So again, we, we try to ensure that we have a thorough understanding and study of all the people who are invited, who are accepted in our program. Because again, it's part of our commitment to the, our international partners and our international community. I see that applicants to the Dominica Citizenship by Investment Program must be at least 18 years old in good health and have also no criminal records. They are also required to officially commit to the investment and be able to demonstrate an excellent character. It would be also helpful to find out how long does the overall process take? Generally speaking, we approve a, 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 an individual, an applicant within three months. Of course, uh, we would leave some time off for clearance of funds to the banks to pay to get your certificate of naturalization. But generally speaking, uh, Dominica is well known. And uh, part of our strength, again, is our ability to have rapid uh, approvals for our applications, our applicants. Generally speaking, it takes three months, and then we, we would uh, give you your approval. You pay the funds once those are cleared, naturalization actually makes you a Dominican. When once you're a Dominican, you use the certificate to apply for a passport with the immigration department. I see that process to obtain a second passport through the economic citizenship involves making a sufficient investment and paying the required Dominica fees. At the end of the citizenship by investment process, the applicant becomes a naturalized citizen of Dominica. That, does this mean the applicant automatically receives a passport? And if so, what type of passport does the applicant receive? Yes. What we do uh, in, in uh, the unit is that we grant a successful applicant a certificate of naturalization. That certificate is used to apply uh, for a passport in the immigration department. That passport uh, is, of course, an ordinary passport. And then that passport allows, uh, allows the citizen to travel uh, along, along the globe. So we grant the certificate of naturalization. The passport is applied for separately with the, with the Ministry of, of Immigration, the police department arm of the government through a different ministry completely. And uh, that is what is utilized to allow the person to travel around the world. Upon fulfilling all eligibility requirements, a foreign national is qualified to gain full legal citizenship in the Commonwealth of Dominica for themselves and their family members. Once approved, I see that uh, applicants are also issued with a certificate of naturalization and will also receive the passport. Your Excellency, you are a Dominican citizen yourself. What do you think are the most attractive benefits of becoming a Dominican citizen and choosing Dominica for an investment? Uh, for me, as a Dominican, uh, I believe the best access we have at the, at the advantage is that we offer you visa free uh, to 140 countries around the world. So I could pick up, pick up my, my passport tomorrow once the airports are, are, are open, once we have the issues of COVID settled, and I could travel uh, to the UK, I could travel to Europe, I could travel to Russia, I could travel to Hong Kong or, or, or China uh, visa-free. And uh, just showing my passport on arrival, I will, will get access. And I believe uh, we allow uh, our investors to, to share in that privilege uh, because we have ensured that the people who are, who are approved are themselves high net worth, they are, they are clean slit, uh, clean character, uh, that their funds are clean uh, and credible. Once you become a citizen, becomes the key to, for the entrance to the rest of the world. But of course, uh, uh, we also have the joy of having visa free access to a number of countries around the world, about 140 uh, of those. We are allowed, we are allowed uh, to have dual nationality 
Uh, so somebody could be a citizen uh, of Dubai or, 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 or of, of, of the UK, uh, of North America, and still be a citizen uh, of Dominica. So the joy of living in a country that is clean, that is green, where nature is respected and loved, is part of the greatest joy uh, and pride that I have as a Dominican. And that offers me, the, uh, the Passport of Dominica offers me the opportunity to travel very easily. Uh, I could decide tomorrow, if there's no corona, that I want to fly to anywhere, to China, I want to fly to Russia, I want to fly to, fly to uh, the UK, to Hong Kong, to Brazil, Singapore, and just pick up my passport and go. Because that is part of the joy uh, that, we, we, uh, that we have as Dominicans. And for me, and for all Dominicans, that is very, very uh, well respected, well loved, well appreciated by all people. I see that Dominica is one of the cheapest and easiest second passport programs among reliable citizenship by investment countries. The efficient and well-structured program makes Dominica potentially the easiest country to gain citizenship through investment, provided, of course, that a prospective investor has no criminal record and a good reputation. Your Excellency, Dominica Citizenship by Investment Program is often described as a success story for the nation. Can you please explain why there is? Uh, for us, we have been uh, a successful program. We, we look, we look uh, of course, at the success of our program because of, of a number of, of things there. I think we have been recognized as one of the best in the world and uh, by a number of, of people. So. Uh, that has been good for us. A number of governments look at what we're doing in Dominica, and uh, we have become the, the new, the standard benchmark for, for the industry. So people look uh, at, at what we do and make changes uh, to the program based on what Dominica is doing uh, currently. But Dominicans themselves, uh, we love the program because there's a direct benefit that we all see. We have built a number of houses for people on Dominica, climate resilient houses, I, uh, I may add. And Dominicans are very, very pleased with that. A number of people are employed with our national employment program that we do, and funds being paid from that by the CBA program. Our infrastructure in schools, in houses, in, uh, in roads, in hospitals have been done uh, because of, of the program. We pay for education for a number of young Dominicans at university or, or universities all around the world. So Dominicans see the benefit so the, uh they, they they are in tune with the, with the program and, and they love the program we also have a program that's very popular in dominica and that's called yes we care where funds from the cba program is utilized to take care of elderly people senior citizens who are left or who are on their own living on their own we send people to take care of them uh, every day to ensure that they have a shower to ensure that they have warm food to ensure that their clothes are, are washed and are well prepared their houses are clean so dominicans everywhere know definitely that this program benefits the masses, benefits the people, reaches to the heart and soul, to the, most, to the less fortunate and those who are most needed among us. So for that, people are very proud and, and uh, we give high compliments to the government for the work that they've been doing because the funds for the program are well utilized and benefit the people of Dominica right all, all over. Well, I'm very happy to hear that the program is being helpful not only to the high net worth individuals across the globe, but it also contributes to the nation of Dominica and to the people who live there. I would like to also find out what trends have you detected in Dominica with respect to number of applications and applicant origin, and how do you think the program will be affected by the global popularity of the citizenship by investment industry? From the beginning, uh, our program have been on the, on the up. We have continued to have increased numbers every year, year after year, and that for us is very good. We have seen an increase in, uh, in our applicants coming in out of Asia, out of the Middle East, uh, even Europe and, and, and uh, North, Africa, North America. We have seen increase uh, an interest in Africa and in Latin America. Countries look forward uh, to our program uh, to, to, to uh, see what we're doing, to make changes to their own program. So. We feel that we have a responsibility as a global leaders of, of, our, of our program to do the things that are right. And we make changes to enhance our project, to enhance our program. And again, the changes that we make usually as to tighten up on the vetting, on the security, uh, on, on uh, the assessment of the applicants, because we want to ensure that as 
more and more applicants are drawn to our program that the less desirables are not attracted or kept out. Those who try to apply, we want to ensure that we do proper due diligence to keep them out. So we tweak our program all the while because we consider and we are aware that we are global leaders in the industry. And we want to ensure that our leadership would be good for the industry. We want to ensure that the global industry is, is properly taken care of, the, the, those who enter are properly vetted, and uh, all must be done to protect the global migration industry. And we are humbled to be in, uh, in high regard among many people, and we want to ensure that we, we make a pledge and a commitment to our partners to continue being global leaders and ensuring that our standards are very high, as high as they possibly can. And we, we look towards our agents for guidance because they are the ones often who interact with the, with the customers, with the clients, and they make recommendations. And we accept recommendations and make changes once we see that they are for the benefit of the industry and the program. To conclude, I believe one of the primary reasons why people buy a second passport is to free themselves from absolute dependence on a single country. It's common advice to diversify financial investments across a variety of markets, property categories, and industries. Yet many people still do not spread their political risk beyond their current jurisdiction. This means that 2020 is an exceptional time to invest in Dominican citizenship program, since this is a secure and strategic citizenship investment for life and for future generations. Your Excellency, thank you so much for speaking with me today. It was such a pleasure to learn more about the citizenship by investment in Dominica from you. Thank you very much uh, for your questions. Uh, they were really uh, very interesting questions. It looked like you were very well researched. Uh, we appreciate the questions that you have asked. We appreciate those who, those who, who joined us. Uh, we know it's uh, interesting times, difficult times, but uh, the presence of all the participants here today is testament to their commitment to the global industry, uh, the commitment to Dominica, knowing what's happening and making contributions. We look forward to your suggestions uh, in discussions. We look forward to your recommendations. We look forward to your participation as together we bind forces to protect the industry and move forward. So once again, thank you very much. And we look forward to uh, doing the best that we can for the survival of the industry. At present, we're in a mood where we are seeking to protect ourselves, our families. Again, stay at home and stay safe. We have received a lot of questions coming from the audience. Due to the limited time of this webinar and big number, we are unable to answer all these questions at this time. However, CS Global Partners team will shortly come back to you with answers. All the questions will be answered in the confidential manner to each of you. You are, of course, able to speak with the agents in your country. If you do not have anybody in your local region, we will be also happy to assist you. Uh, your Excellency, we have received a couple of live questions. So if you don't mind, um, can I kindly ask you to, to elaborate on that? Sure. Uh, again, I would like to take questions from the participants. Again, thank you for, for joining us. We're very impressed with the numbers uh, that we're having this morning. So thank you very much. So let's start with the question um, number one, which comes from the anonymous user, anonymous guest. How does Dominica process applications during the coronavirus pandemic? Well, about two years ago, we were affected by uh, Hurricane Maria. But before that, we uh, were trying to, again, be global leaders by using uh, our applications online. So we use the best company available in the world, and we have uh, all our documents online, or we receive all our applications online. I'm working now from my home. Uh, my staff are at their different homes. After the hurricane, we're able to process from uh, Dominica and London. Today, we are all in Dominica, and we are processing and although we have uh, the corona epidemic, I can work from home. I have all access to all the files, all the documents online. My staff have access to all the documents online. So we are working electronically and uh, we, uh, we are not having any delays. I, I must say yesterday I was quite impressed with the numbers that we processed during the course of yesterday. So we are continuing to work. We are continuing to provide service to uh, our agents, to our guests, to our investors. And we're doing so online. Uh, our process, is fully online, fully uh, uh, electronic. 
and uh, we are continuing to work and, and uh, do our processing uh, online. So for us, it's no problem at all. Your Excellency, and another question from the audience. If I am an Iranian national, can I apply for Dominica citizenship? I live outside of Iran for over six years and reside in Turkey at the moment. Uh, we believe, and we have always said uh, in the past, that we believe that every country, every man uh, is a man. And uh, we support humanity. Uh, however, unfortunately, at present, we had to uh, introduce, as of last month, restrictions on, on people who are in Iran. You have to be living out of Iran for, for a period of, of 10 years. So unfortunately, uh, we cannot accept the application at present. Hopefully, uh, you will continue to live for a while and we will be able to, to uh, deal with your case later on. But at present, no. Uh, we, have, we have to be living out of Iran for, for 10 years and having your business and funds coming out of Iran for 10 years as well. And another one coming from the audience. Do you accept cryptocurrency for the donation, such as Bitcoin, for example? No, uh, I'm sorry. We are, we are not in that area yet. We understand uh, the wisdom of, of uh, new, however, with the scrutiny we have in the world today, it makes it very difficult. We are, the program, the industries are under global scrutiny, and we have to ensure that we keep above board. So even though we have to restrain ourselves from where we want to go, we understand uh, the, the importance uh, of using things like cryptocurrency. But because of the global financial transactions and global financial regulation at present, we keep within line. Unfortunately, at present, we do not accept any funds uh, by, by cryptocurrency. I see. Your Excellence, um, why do you think people should invest in Dominica citizenship as opposite to other countries with the same investment opportunities? like St. Kitts and Nevis, Grenada, Antigua and Barbuda. In the Caribbean, we have uh, five programs on the citizenship. You have St. Kitts, you have uh, Antigua, St. Lucia, Grenada. We are all brothers and sisters. We are, we are uh, all partners. We are, for, we are part of the same, we, formed, we, share, we share the same uh, Caribbean passport. We have the same Eastern Caribbean dollar. So we support each other and we do not criticize each other in any way. But the responses are uh, given to me by agents, why they advise the clients in taking Dominica, are several and varied. The most popular one is, of course, due to our processing. They consider that in Dominica, we have a very efficient uh, system in processing. So our time frame uh, is very good. They also uh, seem to like the idea that for our real estate investments, the numbers are limited and the qualities are high-end uh, known projects. So they say, for instance, in Dominica, you have only seven projects approved, two of which have already sold out. So they see this, the pace of which the projects on them are, have been constructed uh, and, and, uh, and coming from beginning to end. So our investors like that. Our investors also tell me that they like the way in which they can see how the funds are utilized in Dominica. So when our agents visit Dominica, they say, Nanton, I love uh, Jungle Bay. It is absolutely amazing. I love Kempinski. Wow, what a breath uh, taking the hotel that you have. We will love to see the people working in Dominica under the NP project. And they will say, Nanton, the housing that you do in Dominica for your citizens, that is amazing, absolutely amazing. Nowhere in the world are those houses created for people uh, by a government given to the people free of charge, such high quality housing. So our agents like to see that the funds are properly utilized. They like the, the transparency that we have uh, in Dominica. They like our processing. Uh, they love the quality of hotels that we are building. And really and truly, for these things, uh, our agents are very, very satisfied. And of course, they say, Nanton, in Dominica, you, you are 140 countries visa-free. So our agents like those things about us. Our processing, our due diligence, the limited number of projects that, that we approve, and the, the speed with which our projects are implemented, our agents love those things. And that's why uh, they choose Dominica. That's what the agents tell me. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And if you don't mind, we also have an interesting question coming from Lilia Scott. Your Excellency, any clients who are siblings of politically exposed people, would they be considered for the application? That is a, a tricky one. Of course, when, when we grade every, every application, we use about six different measures, one of which is political exposure. If you're politically exposed, will not, it will uh, score you quite low and would affect your results. But we will, not, we will not exclude you automatically based on the fact that you're a politician or, or that you're politically exposed. Your chances are less, but you will be considered. 
if you're a clean politician, if uh, the people in, uh, who know you in your country admit that that person is somebody of, of, of high moral values, who stand uh, for humanity, uh, who uh, the funds, they know where the funds are, are coming from, uh, they are clean, they are not exposed to corruption, money laundering, those things there, then uh, you still stand a chance. But it does, in fact, uh, give you a little notch below. It will, it's one area where we will mark you negatively if you're politically exposed. It will not exclude you completely, but you will be marked uh, on, at a lower level. Your Excellency, thank you very much for such a detailed answer. I know it was a tough question. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that's okay. That's what the industry is about. So we have to learn to work and work with the industry. But Absolutely. I will take a few more questions. Absolutely. And if you don't mind, uh, we also have an interesting question coming from Mr. Tariq Mahmoud. And the question is, if uh, grandparents apply as part of one application or it is a separate application? Uh, you could apply for your children. You could apply for your parents. Uh, grandparents, is, is a grand, grandparents allowed? I think we can give consideration to that. Yes, we can give consideration to that. Well, I see another question. I believe it will be the last one for today. So no, I could uh, take two more. Absolutely. I could take two right. more. Yes. So uh, one of the anonymous guests today is wondering what countries of the region most of your applicants come from? Where do you see a biggest demand is coming from nowadays? The applicants come from different places. Historically, we have a uh, very tremendous uh, interest out of, of China and Southeast Asia. In the recent times, we have had increasing uh, numbers coming out of uh, the Middle East, not any one particular country, but your price in the Middle East, the Arab Springs uh, have led to a number of uncertainty, and therefore you have more applicants coming out, out from uh, the Middle East area. We have had a number of applicants from, from, from Europe, from, from Italy, from France. We have had from North America, Americans who uh, earn their income and revenue from out of the US, don't want to pay taxes on worldwide revenues and worldwide income. So uh, we have Americans who have lots of money outside of the US applying to Dominic as well. Uh, Africa is becoming an interesting market. Uh, uh, Nigeria, you have uh, Uganda, South Africa. So the African market is becoming uh, interesting. South America is becoming interesting. But by and large, our largest numbers come out of Southeast Asia and the Middle East as regions. Your Excellency, and last but not least, I have the last question coming from the audience. If somebody was denied citizenship, can the person reapply for the citizenship in any other Caribbean countries? In the Caribbean, we have what we call a Citizenship by Investment Association, CIFA. And uh, we have committed to each other. If one person is denied in one country, they will not be accepted in the other country. So unfortunately, if Dominica denies you, you can't apply to St. Peter's St. Lucia. If uh, Grenada denies you, then you can't apply to uh, Dominica or, or Antigua. So we have uh, an agreement as CIFA that we will, we will observe the declines, the, the denials of each, of each other. So the simple answer, the short answer is no. Thank you very much. Thank you for your helpful information given to us today, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Thank you to the participants who joined us. Uh, we look forward uh, to continuing working with you. We could take your questions. Uh, you could submit other questions uh, online. We will try to answer you and respond, respond to you. Uh, we know we're going through challenging times as, as a, a global community. We have a responsibility to mankind and to humanity. Uh, the disease, corona, can transport itself. It has to be transported by people. So please, take care of your brother. Take care of the globe. Take care of humanity. Stay safe. Stay at home. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. I also wish you and your family, and of course to all the families of our participants today, to stay healthy and positive during these very uncertain times. Thank you.